Alright guys, today we're talking about failing hard drives. What you can do to save your data and importantly, and maybe most importantly, how you should set up your partitions so that you can maximize recovery of data and some of the programs you might want to know about that could help you recover stuff. In fact, I'm doing this video because someone recommended a video on some of my day-to-day -day activities. Well, I'm working on hard drive recovery for very specific data in the failing hard drive. And I'm going to tell you a bit of what I have done to recover a wallet as well as SSH keys and some other important files. I'm not quite done on my recovery, but I want to go over some important things that I can share with you that can help make this easier on you and what to do if you notice a failing drive as well as what programs you should install to recognize it before it gets too late and sometimes this happens without warning so you have to realize that just because you have programs like one I recommend called smart mon tools install it at the command line if you're running pop OS or another Debian distribution do apt install smart m o n t O O L S, and what that's going to do is help you uh, have the tools to scan your drives, to check on their current status, to look for those failures, so you can have the warning if possible before the ultimate failure happens. And so, some of the advice I'm going to give you guys today is beforehand, of course, install SmartMon tools. That, and then you're going to use that with smart CTL and that's going to allow you to do so say for example you could use smart CTL command the lowercase a flag and then the drive in question so say for example if this drive is slash DEV slash SDA and there it'll scan the whole drive looking for the problems now here's another thing you may want to have so if you have a bad cable in your laptop or other machine you may not be able to read the drive. That could be the problem to begin with. It could be a fine drive. It could be a bad cable. So I want you to go out and get one of these cables. It's a SATA to USB on the other end. And from here, we can plug this in the back and we can test the drive itself and see if we can read some of that data before the drive ultimately is useless. So here we can see right here we have this little end here we can find the end on our drive and we can snap it in and it fits nicely like so and at this point it's recognized as a drive we have our drive recognized it also auto mounts on pop os i prefer not to do that because you don't want to use the drive any more than you have to when you're trying to recover your most important files so first let me go over some important rules and tips that I have for you today. So before anything happens, before you ever occur with a failing drive, install SmartMon tools, back up your drives regularly. Now, one thing I highly recommend is create a separate home partition. Now you might notice with my script, for example, I have the uh, changing SD card home script where you can create a USB encrypted key. That's an example of a separate home partition. And that script can automate the process for a separate home partition. Um, and so having that separate home partition, one of the major benefits here is you're minimizing the recovery of the amount of the size of that partition. So by having your home separate, you only have to focus at first on that home, which is where your important and your personal files are going to be stored. Everything else can be reinstalled. Now your encryption keys, some of your other things that you may have may be stored on that home directory and you'll want to recover that first. So by creating a smaller partition for just the home sector, you're going to be able to minimize the process of copying that over. See, if you copy a larger partition or the whole drive at once, you may have a failing drive unusable before you're finished copying it. Now, one of the first things I recommend doing is trying to mount your drive on a cable like this immediately. 
and then just go for those files that are most important. Now, if you have an encrypted drive, you can use something like crypt setup lux open, and then you name that drive location like slash dev slash sda1, and then the name you want to call it, and then you can mount it in the mapper after you unlock it using the key. And from there, you can go for your most important files. If you have any questions on this, please leave a comment. Happy to help. I uh, want to make sure nobody has this kind of problem that they have to deal with. Thankfully, I always have backed up my most important servers, my most important drives, and I don't have to recover a whole lot on the failing drive. And so this is something I recommend doing creating a, a separate home or maybe create backups, pre-backups of your very important files like your SSH keys. For example, my servers won't allow a login without that SSH key. And so one thing you can do is back up the SSH keys right away to an encrypted volume. In fact, what I chose here was an SD card and Zulu Crypt. I created a very simple SD card file by going to create in a file and on Zulu Crypt. You know, unfortunately, I'm not able to record my screen right now, but you know, in the future, if you guys want to see any of this on video, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to come up with a video on that. So, one of the other things you can do if you can't do the mounting of the partition and the saving of those files individually. There is a program called GNU DD Rescue. It's called DD Rescue. Now, you may want to check that out afterwards, but the key here is, and the thing I want to emphasize most, is you don't want to overwork your drive if it's failing the hardware. Because if you do that and you attempt to repair you know, the software end of the drive and you have a failing part inside the drive, there's a good chance you're going to run out of you know, good hardware in that drive, it's going to fail before you get a chance to copy an entire partition. So like I said, my suggestion, mount the partition where your most important stuff is first on a separate cable. Grab those most important files first. After you do that, then you can go in with something like DD Rescue and attempt to recover the rest. Now, another thing to keep in mind is sometimes things like DD Rescue can take something like 70 days, depending on the size of the partition. It's another reason to make a separate home partition so it is smaller to work with. And that 70 day period, you think your drive, if it's failing, is going to last that long? There's a good chance it's going to fail before that. So that's why I recommend get your most important files first. Then, and only then, should you look at your other recovery options. And if you can mount it, go ahead and grab those important files. That's what I have today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment below if you want to learn something about this. And if you want me to talk a little more about the process, go ahead and leave a comment, question below, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. That's all I have today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back later with more on how to protect your Linux system and your privacy.